And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. That may be sealed. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you that if the enemy ever tries to make you feel like again that you all by yourself, Jesus don't love you, just remember, he said, Lo, I am with you always. So the next time the enemy tries to make you feel that press, depressed, press down, and it just said, The devil and lie, the Lord is on my side. And I don't have the right, I can't, I won't, I don't have the right to complain. Because if God don't do anything else, He's already done enough. Jesus was not questioning God here. He was showing a deep expression of the anguish yeah. that he felt. Yeah. When he took on the sins of the world which caused him to be separated from his father. Yeah. That's why the scripture says today, don't let nothing yeah. separate you from the love of God. Because if you ever had that feeling of not feeling God, you know that that's not a good feeling. I would just wish that I could feel God at all times. I wish that I could feel His presence at all times. But there are some times, saints of God, that we go through that we feel like God has left us. That we feel like He's not hearing our prayer. He said, I'm hearing my, your prayers, but I got to allow you to go through some things. I got to allow you to feel some pain because what make you so good that you yeah, you can't go through nothing when my son had to go through? What make you so good that you can't suffer nothing when Jesus had to suffer the sins of the world? What in the world make us think that we said high and mighty to be that we ain't got to feel no pain? But the good thing to know that I'm not suffering for nothing. My trials is not in vain. I cannot. I will not. I don't have a right to complain. Amen. So the next time you find yourself trying to complain, you just think about what Jesus did for you. And that messes me up because when I just think about the goodness of Jesus, oh, that he done for me. Not just one thing, when I think about everything he done. Some of you said, well, I ain't got nothing to be thankful for. Yeah. Every time I pick up my car tomorrow, every time I cut my lights off, my cell phone off, my high phone, my you know, internet don't work. But didn't he wake you up this morning? Yeah. Didn't he start you on the way? Didn't he bring you up and down the highway? Saying, That's enough to be thankful for. When you look around, your family's doing okay. I know everything might not be the way you want it to be, but you show ought to be thankful that it's not as bad as it could be. There are people over in Japan who they can sit in church today and give God some prayer, but some of them ain't have no church in sin because of the desolation, because of the, the things that's going on. But we have the right, we have the we have the uh, authority to give God praise. Amen. Come on, come on. Why? Because He's worthy. Yes, He is. To be praised. Jesus was showing the physical agony. I'm about to, I'm told you, I'm almost out there. I'm finna sit down now. The physical agony was horrible. But even worse was the, watch this now, was the period of the spiritual separation from God. Jesus suffered his double death, physical and spiritual, so that we would never have to experience eternal separation from God. He died twice Amen. just so we could live once. All right. I said something then. He died twice just so you could live once. That's good, sir. And in our one time of living, you mean to tell me we can't thank him? We can't praise him? We can't magnify him? We can't exalt his name? Because why? He didn't have to do it, but he did. Thank Y'all know, even when we deserve death, he, he still had mercy. Even when we deserve death, he had grace. And it was sufficient. We don't even have a right to complain. Jesus experienced just a moment without God. And it was hard for him to bear. But some of us we are for the hits and toes. Some of us have been without God right in the church for years, and it doesn't even move you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Jesus hung in 
there. It said from the sixth to the ninth hour. All right. Come on. Mm -hmm. Thank God for our sister rolling on me. It said that it hung in there from the sixth to the ninth hour. And here we go again with talking about people mumbling and complaining about arguing about what time it actually was. And I used to always think, thanks to God, that when I was coming up as a child, they said when we hung from the sixth to the ninth hour, I thought they was talking about from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Yeah. But as I was studying, and I found out that it was from noon until 3 o'clock. But notice now, we, we that's we. That's argumentable, but like I said, it don't matter what actually time it was. But one thing I do know, it wasn't nighttime because it said when the sixth hour came, darkness fell. Uh -huh. Now, can you imagine you going about your day and at 12 o'clock it just get pitched up? My God. You know that's nobody but God. But it said Jesus hung in there. And this is what Jesus is trying to tell us in science is no matter what you're going through, no matter what trials you face, he said, just hang in there. He said, but I want to warn you, you got to watch sometimes who you hanging with. Because the scripture told me that while Jesus was hanging that he had, he had two thieves, one on the left. And one on the right. How many of you know you got some friends that be on your left? And some on your right. Some talking right. Some talking wrong. But Jesus said you better watch who you hanging with. Because one of them was in. You want to talk at first, but the other one on the other side of the beat them said, Now you know we done done wrong, but this one here hadn't done a thing. You know, sometimes people that are not even in church can recognize Jesus when the ones right in church can't even recognize who he really is. Jesus said, hang in there. Come on, tell it. Know that he'll be there right. by your side. Right. Jesus hung there for those that talked about him. Yes, uh -huh. And spit on him and called him everything but a child of God. Uh -huh. All right. Jesus drew my attention to him crying out. That God is trying to get us to the point to just cry out. To the Lord. Right. When you're in need, Jesus said, All you got to do is just call on my name. I feel yes. my help now. He said, All you got to do is just look to the heal for what's coming your help. Oh, yeah. Jesus said, All you got to do is just hang on in there because I paid the price for you. Oh, yeah. He said, When uh, you cry to God, you call God to move in your life. Uh, yes. You call God remember his purpose for your life. Oh, yeah. He had to allow Jesus to feel what it was like not to have him and then not to take the pain away so that he can show you that all you got to do is just hang on in there. Uh, it doesn't matter how bad it feels what you're going to do. Jesus said just to hang on in there. He said the one thing you don't have is the right to complain. Uh, he said the wow, you don't I feel like preaching this thing. He said, it doesn't matter what the enemy said, that you was not going to make it. He said, just hang on in there. He said, but well, while you're hanging, just don't complain. Because if your Jesus didn't have the right to complain, you sure don't. So all you got to do is the next time you start to complain, just to think about what Jesus went through for you. I'm so glad that he died. I'm so glad that not only did he die, but he got up with all power in his hand. He may not come when he wanted, but he's always right on time. Oh, glory to God. Is there anybody here that knows they don't have a right to complain? You know you're not walking like you're supposed to walk. You know you're not doing like you're supposed to do. But Jesus loves you still. He loves you in spite of what you're going through.
tell me that God is good. And so well, then, to be praised. Because Jesus would feel God's plan, when Jesus died, he didn't have to stay there, but he got up with all power in his hand. You see, the enemy thought he had Jesus when he gave his life to the cross. Uh, you see, he thought he had him then, and, and he, he said, oh, death, just hold it, just a, just a, we got him now. But the one thing Jesus did, he took the sting out of death. Uh, he took the power from death that he thought that he had, uh, and he got a For you to die 